Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Nick and I am back with another video for you guys. Back with another banger as usual. Guys, today we got the F30 with us. The blue F30 that we haven't done uh, videos on in a really long time. But it's back. So a while back we did um, an M Sport steering wheel retrofit. Uh, we actually installed a steering wheel with paddle shifters, but the paddle shifters don't work. So um, I got Nick, the coding guy, the guy that everybody knows for coding, uh, working with me here today. He's gonna um, talk a little bit about how to retrofit um, this whole thing. And uh, yeah, guys, let's get right into it. So in terms of the hardware, this retrofit's pretty easy. Once you have your steering wheel fitted, the car needs one wire ran from your clock spring down the dash through the dash into your fem module which is the main module that controls all the modules in your car down in the passenger side footwell okay and then it's just one line of code and these will work heck yeah bro i mean these look pretty awesome right for what they are it's all oem i don't know i didn't want to go what do you think would you go with aftermarket ones or you like the oem paddles a lot more i mean i don't put a single aftermarket part in my car so. <laughs> All the way. I'm like OEM plus guy too. Yeah, let's get right into it. All right guys, so we're gonna start off by taking off the steering column plastics. Uh, that basically just some clips right here. Uh, we're gonna start off by taking off both footwell panels that go basically underneath here. And then we're gonna take off that kick panel right on that side there because that's where our module is. Uh, so you guys, let's get right into it. Guys, so we basically got this uh, kick panel off here. We got the bottom footwell panel off as well. Uh, it's basically two 10 mil bolts here, just a bunch of clips over here. It's just two 10 mils. Uh, we got all that stuff out. Uh, we're gonna get into uh, running that cable now. So, yeah, there's still not enough room. Also, this is an MBT, not an MBT Evo. I mean, we may be able to get a wire, kind of like there. run a wire, guys. So, basically, what we're trying to do is uh, we're gonna connect a wire here from the steering column. We're basically trying to run it underneath the center console right there. We're trying to figure out if we can find enough space to run it through here uh, to the other side or if we have to go underneath there. But if we, have to, if we have to go underneath all of that right there, it's just gonna be a lot of work. So we're just trying to find a better solution realistically for it, so. I think we're just gonna pull this out. This all right. Bro, this oh, trim looks beautiful. freaking beautiful, right? That's honestly better than the M3 one. Like, <laughs> So nice. <laughs> we got this big old. This is ridiculous. Hey, Nate. Don't Let me just. I'll. I'll uh, We're man on the budget. You don't, you don't have another T20. I have a T20. I can put it on this little guy, but it won't fit the, the drill. <laughs> bro. Oh, oh, wait, bro. Bro, hold up. Oh, bro. I didn't get what you meant, bro. Yeah, it's a T20. Alright guys, so we did end up pulling apart um, the whole head unit right here, um, obviously, or the main dash trim uh, that goes along here. Uh, we took off the climate control, basically pulled apart this whole centerpiece. Uh, we're going to basically run the wire underneath there, through this box here, and into the other side, and get it connected to that module right there. So I'm just going to... Basically expose the wire right there. Yeah, so... See, the, the pins we have, they're meant for a thinner. See, this sheathing is pretty pretty thick. Yeah, I see that, actually. this wire. So, um, what you normally you would have the pin go half on the metal to get mm -hmm. a good connection. And then a little bit, there's like an additional like band, bigger band that wraps on the sheathing. But I think this is too big for the pins we have. So, what we can do is just expose the wire more and just wrap it around all the metal. And just, you know, it's not the best. 
Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It looks like 18 gauge. I'm, I don't know for sure. I got you. But 18 gauge is like something that would power like the controller, or your your uh, shifter, or like any like kind of like small <clears throat> like electronic module. I got you. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, so this we can do. Basically, we have all of the metal because it's thinner, and we can just crimp this right here. It's not the best connection or like the an OEM connection because it'd be like kind of like that. But this sheathing is a bit too thick. I see. So that makes sense. We, we have. Push the metal inside there. So you take the connector, and I give it a little pressure, hold it down, the copper wires up until the end of the crimp, you just crimp down, and then release, these crimpers are not the best, and then we have a nice electrical little tight connection piece. for the car. That's you can pull on that, it's not going anywhere, and then we can oh, sick, dude. run this wire. <clears throat> Are you gonna start running it from basically that side right there? So, normally, what I like to do, I like to go from the top down, but for this, you're gonna have to. You want me to grab it from here? We're gonna have to do a fishing expedition. Okay, there you go. I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, so we basically just there's hot heater lines here. I'm gonna pull that through. All right, bro. So I'm starting to I'm starting to feed it. Dang, you just feed fed all that. So basically, this is all going to be covered up by that footwell mod or panel, so right? So what, what I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to pin this in, and we can just pull the slack out because we're making this. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to pull the trunk carpet back. I can probably try to run the pre-existing aftermarket wiring a bit better than what it is currently. All right, right on. Lift. This bad boy is about to have some paddle shifters, bro. Bro, this thing looks good, huh? Yeah, I got it. So, yeah, then once we're, so now we have the wire, and then. Oh, once, you ran it all the way behind this whole carpet, huh? Yep. Oh, right on. Bro, it looks like OEM. I, I love it so much, dude. That is OEM. And then basically, we're going to pin this in. We have a lot of slack, and then we can kind of pull the slack so it's fit to the car. I see. So, we're going to find out. What do we need to pull off? Uh, what do we need to pull off from that? What is that called? What is that module right there? This is called the FEM. FEM, yeah. yeah. And then we should disconnect the battery before we uh, mess, mess with the it. connectors because there's main power. Or if you don't care, we can just unplug it. I'll, I, I can disconnect the battery, I don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> so. Whatever's better for you. Um, and then there's a few T20s that hold this bracket in. And then we can, or maybe, I'm not sure, I need to f figure out which connector of these we're going to be tapping into, pitting into. Alright guys, so we're basically going to disconnect the battery right now. Uh, while Nick is figuring out which connector we need to tap that wire into. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that real quick and we'll catch you guys once we have that figured out. Remove this white connector, top connector here, which is nice and easy. You want to remove the mod or anything. Slide the, the white, white connector on there? White connector that's on this slot. So the second one. Okay, second slot. Okay. And that's connector 7B. And then we are going to be... Just pinning. tapping. So are we just tapping into that? Uh, that cable we will that be pinning right in this wire in the pin slot 5 of this connector. So, do you see these two little tabs on the yeah, connector? Yeah. You just pull them apart, slide that out with a little Heck force, yeah. and then this connector is labeled. So this is pin 37 to 54, we want the other side. This is slots 1 to 18. Oh wow, bro. Yep. Then we're going to go pin slot 5. Pin slot five is empty. So one, two, three, four, five. You see it's empty. We're gonna reposition the wires a bit so we can get into it, right? Get into it, and then we're gonna slide our wire into and this is could be difficult because there's a bunch of wires in here. Bro, the straight OEM, bro, you're a genius. Yep, and then that, you see that, hear that little click? It, cl That's it clicked it. in, yeah, yeah. Then we can take this. Throw it back on there. And throw this thing back on there. And then we can reconnect. There we go. And that's seated. That's locked in all the way. That's not going anywhere. Then we can take, move that out of the way. We're going to take our oh, wire. Oh, and we're gonna pull this. Okay, I see. I'm gonna pull out the slack. It's pulling out the slack to make it basically as uh, as OEM. Looking and then as possible, we can, right? yep, we can kind of, you know, it's not gonna be pulled. This is an OEM wire, but we can kind of wrap. Put it in the 
on the carpet. We're gonna tuck this in so we still get a little bit sticking out here. We can pull this carpet out. Go around here. So now I'm gonna hold it, and if you can pull the slack back out of the hole. Pulling, 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 pulling. And I'll stop there. Yep. Give it a little bit of slack. There we go. Good. So now this side is done. This is wired in correctly. <clears throat> and now we, we can put the trim panel back if want, or we can continue on the other side. Yeah, let's get this side done. And then, bro, that looks so cool, bro. By well, the way he's done it? Yeah. I thought he's a genius, bro. <laughs> Heck yeah. He's a walking genius. No, it's so cool to be like, bro, knowledgeable like this kind of stuff. It's pretty freaking dope. So, we don't want to see this ugly blue wire when we're servicing our head unit or have it out. Uh-huh. So we're going to make sure, I'm just going to grab all the, the wiring here. Push it to the it side. Up, and then we're going to run this wire below the cage of the head unit, where the head unit sits. Well, I'm gonna make sure because there's heater cord lines that run right around here. So I'm gonna make sure that we're not gonna oh, melt. Oh, so we're kind of not in the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's on the way. It's just that there's this heat. If you if you look into here, there's like metal lines. That, like right here, the line I'm touching is is pretty warm. So we want to make sure the wire is out of the way of this, so it doesn't melt. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Basically, ran that through the steering column right there so basically we're basically going from the dash right into the steering column i guess we didn't really need to remove that under tray but it's good to have more space and light so okay. if you see this wiring harness this is the main wiring harness to your steering column or your it's called the slz is the official name you have this one and then you have another one right here that the steering column is blocking this connector from being removed. You're joking. Yeah, like you see, it's, it, the, the little lever is not clearing. So, fingers crossed, this is the connector we need to use, and it's not this one. All right, guys, so basically we had to pull apart uh, the whole steering wheel assembly um, and the clock spring because uh, for some reason, BMW made this plug that just does not want to get out unless you pull out the whole assembly. So. So we pulled all that stuff apart. Um, basically, generic stuff, you take off the airbag, use a 16 mil, you take off that steering wheel, and we got some seven mils for some reason on that clock spring. I don't know if they're original, but uh, yeah, we're ready for you, Nick. Ready. Let's get into it. So basically, you know, this steering column moves, you know. Up and down. Up, down, you know, in, out. So we're gonna have this out all the way. Because when we make our wiring harness, we want to have it an appropriate length and give it some slack. Yeah. So I'm just going to give it a little more slack. Maybe I'll cut it right there. Can you imagine? <laughs> you just like pull your steering wheel out and you're... Rip the wire. <laughs> yeah. And your battle shifter stopped working. Bruh. A little dull. There we go. All right. And then we're going to have our one pin. Same procedure. Same procedure, we're just going to take this, make sure we have enough in the wire right there. Sick, dude. Heck yeah. And then we're just going to, once again, this is the same deal as the FEM. Same little ta little, basically the, little uh, tab here. This sick. is going to go to pin slot 3. So we are going to see, so this is labeled one, this is labeled six. We're gonna look for one, two, three. There we go. That's yes, in there. Wow, bro. Throw that bad boy right in there. Yeah. Man, this is so sick. Yep, and then we can get our clock spring that went somewhere. Put this back in, but first. Let's connect those bad boys back on there first. It's definitely funky, bro. That'll still work. So we're gonna put this. We're going to fishing expedition back here. <laughs> uh, right there, yeah. There. It's locked it all the way. That's not going anywhere. All right, dude. Heck yeah. There we go. Basically, you toss those back on there. Yeah. Right there. 
Okay, Funny up. enough, but man, BMW plastics are really fragile sometimes. Oh. Like when you start screwing things in, especially like engine bay plastics. I feel like it's so fragile. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Oh, everyone's like, oh, we must use plastic. Yeah. Might have been a little bit. I mean, it's got that. Yeah, the little yeah, mark. It's not yeah, a little mark on there. E36 or whatever, where it's just. Uh, the E36 has it like the other way. Then there, there's like no mark. You can have it like a little, like one, two fall. Oh my gosh. I think that's more than enough, dude. Enough, yeah. Heck yeah. So then, got our connector for. What is this connector for, by the way? I always wondered. So I, I'm pretty sure. This would make sense for clock spring, but what is this little? That might be the paddle. I think this is paddles, and then it had a heated steering wheel. He had and a heated then, one, right? I seen that because of the because yeah. it has like battery thing or whatever underneath. Yeah, it, it has like a little. It's just like a module that sits in here uh -huh. for the heated. So that is. So yeah, guys, <clears throat> I basically got this steering wheel with the paddles already. Um, I think if you were to put re paddles on its own, it's a much different retrofit, right? It would be. Because this already pretty much has this wiring that goes here, right? Yeah, you can you can buy the paddles and they they, they screw in here. Like I, I'm pretty sure the the metal frame here has actual provisions to put them in. It's kind of kind of cut around. I'd probably honestly just get a get a wheel of paddles and then just sell the old one on eBay. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at yeah. that point, a lot of people yeah. buy it for a manual, so I mean, yeah, it would make definitely, sense. Definitely, yeah. So okay. that's pretty much it, right? Now what Pop we have to do? Grab the airbag and then we can tape the wire with a factory wiring harness so it doesn't get caught and tangled in it because you know the steering column is adjusting. Yeah. So what about in terms of like programming? What do we have to go about that? So it's it's just one line um, of code. What are those two ways to do it? You can code in a sport transmission. Uh huh. Um, to the car, which you know this is a, a standard automatic. Well, this is actually the sport shifter. I did upgrade yeah. that sport shifter yeah. on there too. But uh, you can actually code the transmission for the car to do sport, which will give you sport and sport plus. Um, you can do that and that'll give you the paddles or you can just go into the clock spring. There's actually a mod codable module in the car and you can just code. Actually, no, the FEM has the line of code by bad for just like paddle shifters, yes or no. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. That's actually yeah. so simple. Mm-hmm. So. Can you uh, so can you do that kind of like stuff on maybe even like Beamer code or something, just for the people watching? Yeah, I mean probably. Actually, do, do, does anyone have a dongle? Uh, no, do you have a do dongle? Like a dongle or what kind of dongle? Like an MHD dongle or anything like that. But like I I coded crap with Beamer code. That, that'd work if you want to use Beamer code. You know what I mean? I mean, bro, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to go about. But I'm just saying. The easy way, yeah, we can try that. We can let it go. All right, guys. Uh, so we're pretty much done with all the uh, wiring here. Uh, what's left is pretty much the coating. So I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together and uh, then we'll get, in the, get into the coating part of it. All right guys, so finally two hours later, um, we got the paddle shifters coated. Um, everything seems to be working. So uh, we did run into a little issue though. Once I put this car in drive, it does give me a transmission malfunction, um, which is um, mainly because of the uh, instrument cluster because I have an uh, M3 instrument cluster in here, so um, it's kind of acting up with all the codes. It's giving me a check engine light. Um, it's giving me a couple other codes. We did program the whole transmission to the M Sport version, so basically now um, it's changed a lot of features. A lot of features. The car now has like Sport and Sport Plus, uh, which it didn't have before. So I'm gonna just show you guys a little bit of a test drive and uh, show you really how these paddle shifters work. Basically, we got everything dialed in besides. Uh, what's going on with the instrument cluster. So uh, let's get into this ride. Guys, so the car shifts a lot, a lot quicker now. And I think that's because we pretty much coded the whole transmission um, to the M-Sport version, which actually seems a lot cooler in my opinion, but um, yeah, let's give it a little shot. Man, that's freaking awesome. Woo! But yeah, guys, we are getting this, like I said, we are getting this transmission code, uh, which is a little bit annoying. It bugs me a little bit, but um, we're gonna end up actually retrofitting back to the, just the LCI, uh, speedometer or instrument cluster and uh, that should fix all our issues Jeez, 
Those are like lightning shifts. This is awesome, man. All right, guys, that'll pretty much do it for this video. Huge shout out to Nick. He definitely helped me out a lot with this uh, whole program and coding thing. Um, we'll definitely get it dialed in maybe tomorrow or the next day. Um, I will have his Instagram channel um, in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Really? Yeah, they're like every the crank thumb is done and thing. Rob bearings are stupid. They all just. They, they, I I I am I agree. Yeah, I don't blame them. It it you know some things they do very well. Others it's just. I mean they they make logic. some pretty cool cars, bro. I mean logic <laughs> is removed. He's got a sponsorship. <laughs> hey BMW for watching this. I got your back, baby.